So, um, video. Now, I've been involved in video now for, it's going to show my age, but about 25 years. And that's when we first started using video in research. So, during that time, it's changed dramatically. I used to go to meetings and people would say, you can't use video, it's not real research, respondents won't behave properly, you know, won't give you the true, their true feelings, etc., etc. So we've moved from that all the way through to now what we start to offer, and I'm going to show you lots of examples, um, all the way through to animations and using animations to bring data to life. So my objective today really with you is to share lots of different styles and to give you some ideas and some thoughts about how you can use video in your communication. So one of the biggest challenges, and we've come across this time and time again, it's been mentioned today as well, is the challenge of like how to get cut through and how to get insight elevated internally and how to get it actioned. I don't know if any of you have seen this research from PwC recently. They conducted some, a study with about 180 sort of C-suite people, and they found that only 5% of clients actually take action as a result of research undertaken, which is obviously a bit scary. We also conduct our own survey, and we found that 82% um, of companies we talked to thought that at least 30% of their insight could be presented in a better way. Now, ooh, I didn't turn the lights on. <laughs> um, we've also, I mean, I'd be interested if you do a show of hands now, as compared to 25 years ago, if you all put your hands up in terms of how many of you actually do use video, either on your client's behalf or for yourselves. Can you just raise your hands? Yeah, it's not far off my nine out of ten. What I would say is that there are different ways to use research, and this show reel, uh, it's our show reel, it's just going to give you a quick, very, very quick overview of how and the different types of methodologies and styles and then I'll go into more specific case studies. Whoops. So that just gives you um, a, a sort of a quick snap, snap sort of chat, a snap view, overview of, of exactly what you can do with video. 
The types of things that you use video in research with at the moment, and I'm sure a lot of you are already doing these, are film to focus groups. That's kind of like a given. Um, the way focus groups are filmed is still, to my mind, not actually yet in the 21st century. Um, they can be filmed in a lot better way than they often are. Um, video diaries, a lot of people are doing those. Um, observational, that's the kind of things that we were watching before with the kids. We do a lot of street and in situ sort of short type videos, um, interviews, so it could be in bars, in airports, um, at railway stations, all over the place. We do a lot of, um, for example, we do a lot of depth interviews or sort of ethnographic style videos, interviews, where we're spending the whole time with people a whole day or morning, and we also do a lot of what we do, contextualising cutaways. And again, there were a couple of videos of that this morning, or this afternoon, was it? Um, day in the life of. We've got docu-style consumer films, and I'm going to show you an example of that, which is kind of like a bit more high-end. Segmentation videos has been a bread and butter one for us for, oh, since we did one. We did a huge segmentation study for Nokia um, about ten, no, about nine years ago, and that was in 23 countries, and it was a combination of depth interviews and street interviews with stacks and stacks of cutaways. We created a massive portal, and they could access all these videos from that portal and download them. And then finally, the big thing that we've been doing a lot of this year, um, the last couple of years, are animations to bring to life data and stats. So it's not just about what people are saying, it's actually about what they're doing, behaving, and their body language. So how, is our, how are the videos used in research? Again, this would be really quite interesting. I'd, be quite, I'd quite like to know how you guys use it at the moment. Um, a lot of the work that we do is, is sort of dual purpose. So it's for research, but then it then gets used in sales, training, um, and a lot of internal, external comms as well, to the point of putting it onto um, their websites and YouTube channels, etc. It's also used in advertising. We've had adverts and also special initiatives. So the beauty of this is if you can actually get your comms people or your training people into a meeting right at the start when you're looking at doing the research, then you can then potentially get extra budget to actually create video in maybe a, in, a, in a bigger way, augmented way from sort of what you were thinking. Our videos tend to be not just about clips that you're putting into presentations, but actually videos that stand on their own and tell their own story. So, for example, um, the training videos, we do a lot of work with um, Barclays Bank in the UK, and for the last five or six years, our videos actually go down to branch level and get used in the branches to train the staff. And equally, we've just done some videos for them which were given out to older people, at customers, who needed a little bit of extra help to learn how to use digital banking, that sort of internet banking. So it really is using the voice of the consumers and real people to engage. And so it's not just about getting the research responses, but it really is about using it as a communication tool. So these are just, this is just a, a few of the different things to give you ideas. So you've got your depths, your vox pops, the selfies, um, observational. There are a couple maybe that we'll show you today that you might not have come across before, like flip boards. Um, but again, that works really, really well if you're trying to get a little bit of your consumer voice into an organisation and you've got big screens around the offices, but you can't have audio, so you just have flip boards and people write their emotions and thoughts on. But again, I've got some examples. And then, once you've got the footage, once you've got your ideas, it's also about the types of edits. So we edit from... We've got the classic kind of head and shoulders edit all the way through to added graphics, much more creative, kinetic, animations, and mood boards. Okay, so now for the fun part. I'm going to start showing you some examples. So first of all, this is, um, just to give you a bit of background to this, this was um, uh, on behalf of Unilever. Uh, it was in Nigeria, and we interviewed in two locations, and they've created a water centres in both in, in Nigeria, and we spent a week at each place with women, and it was very much about finding out um, how the water centres were impacting on their lives. And there were five themes that came out of it. One of them was very much about saving women, um, saving time, and what they could do with that time. So this is this one. We normally don't have time. Mm. Time of looking for water, you will not have even a small time for yourself. In the past, we walk very far because there's a stream here. 
that we normally go and fetch water, let me say, two kilometers. When you go to the stream, as I've said, you queue. You won't come home for about four, five hours. Your children are still missing you. I don't have much time for my son. I'll leave it behind to get water. You affect my time. You affect my school. Now that the water center is there, it's now that we have time. Something that I use three hours, you use 30 minutes and you finish. Then you have time. The place has been changed. It's become a town completely now. We are enjoying it. The spare time we have now help us to do our business. I'm making more profit because I have enough time now to save. We do together as, as a family. We do have time to, to talk to ourselves. I tell them. So you can see with that one, they, with the series of videos were actually, I know that they went up right up to the kind of board level and they were used at conferences. I think they went to the, the um, water week that's held. And so they were used everywhere and they got really amazing exposure to the point that actually we've now been doing one in India as well, talking about, um, talking to, I think, in fact, it was Firefly who were the research agency and we were sort of working alongside them as the sort of video arm. So really powerful and very much used for external comms and taking the whole word and the consumer voice out to the out to comms. So this is a bit of fun. I'm going to show you the flip boards, which again you may or may not have seen. Okay, should we stop that one? <laughs> I don't know what's happened to the video. But anyway, basically, the idea is you have boards and you get people to write on them. So we quite often do these with Vox Pops as well. So we'll be out interviewing people for, say, maybe, and we talk to them about 10 to 15 minutes. We'll get them to answer 10, 10 or so questions and we'll get them to write things on the boards. If anyone wants to see examples, I have actually got some sort of like some um, sticks and you can see different examples. So... Um, but they're really good fun and people would enjoy writing on them and they, you can put them to music and you can make it really entertaining. So on to video diaries and I know a lot of you are doing video diaries so um, the way we do the video diaries is maybe slightly different in that we do spend these video diaries for example, we're very, it was very much about segmentation and um, we spent a lot of time with these guys and we were talking to them on the phone a lot. We also did a follow-up depth interview with them um, and they posted a, oh, about four or five hours worth of footage over a period of a week. So less of the sort of short, snatch, sort of short, sharp, snappy responses, but much longer. But again, I'll, we can play this just to give you a feel for how we edit it, really. One that does all the technology. I've got a, 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 um, a PC here, a desktop, I have my phone which is always with me. I'm just taking a picture of some grapefruit spoons that I want to put on eBay. I don't do technology at all. I hate the uh, computer, I hate all these high-tech phones. The way I feel about technology, mm, I think with me I find it Infuriating. Uh, so a bit of tech I use every day is uh, this little thing here called the Nike Fuel Band. Uh, what it does is it tracks your uh, measurement through the day very using some accelerometers inside. So I work for rugby training, gymming. So that just gives you an idea. I mean, one of the things that we do with our video diaries is that a lot of the, I mean, people are collecting video footage left, right and centre. One of the big challenges for the research industry is like, how do you curate that? What, how do you make sense of it? So obviously one of the things that we do is we get all the video footage and we'll uh, go through it by theme, pull out the key insights, etc. Because otherwise you're going to end up with hundreds of hours worth of footage and you're like, what do I do with this? Um, oh, we did miss one, but never mind. What was the, there? So I wanted to show you this one as well. This is one that we did for the BBC, and they'd done a big study, um, a big study about gender. And again, it was like oh, about 60 slides of PowerPoint. It's like how can we make this something a little bit more engaging? So this is what we did for this part of it. I'll show you.
Gender is widely discussed both within the media industry and the press. Men and women show different patterns in the amount of types of media they consume. And despite progress, the number of men on TV and radio still outnumber the number of women, particularly at the older end. But what do the audience think? To understand how the audience feel about this issue, the BBC carried out a wide programme of research looking at what had been done before in this area, analysing patterns of behaviour and collecting views on the attitudes of men and women to what the media offered them. Working with the agency MTN, we spoke to practitioners in the broadcast industry, people from pressure groups with a particular interest in gender and a wide cross-section of men and women across the demographic spectrum. The aim was to really get beneath the surface of audience views in this area to help inform the wider debate. This has been the biggest investigation the BBC has ever conducted on the subject of gender. It's also worth saying that the focus of the investigation was the whole of the broadcast and online media, not just the BBC's place in it. The study found that the issue of gender portrayal in the media isn't top of mind for much of the audience. The wide range of choice available today, a sense that things are getting better over time, and the presence of some high-profile content examples that buck the trend all help to temper any concerns. However, on further discussion with the audience, there are a number of issues below the surface that do matter to the audience. Older women are felt to be underrepresented, particularly on television, as are real women with a sense that the media can overvalue looks over ability with too much focus on body image. And social media is also seen to contribute to body pressures among young people. There are also concerns for some that the media has become too sexualised, and this is particularly an issue for parents. And although things are felt to be better than in the past, there are still examples cited of formulaic gender roles continuing to exist across the media. So basically that, that kind of gives you an idea. People come to us and they'll, we sit down with the, um, the research department and they'll have, they'll have a concept, they'll have the, the findings and the insights, but they just want to be able to communicate it easily. And that's kind of where we step in and the fact that we've got the research background as well as the production side, the sort of the production skills kind of comes to bear. So here's some more. We've got talking heads. Sort of that, once you've got the all your footage, it's all about the edit and the, how you should be doing the edit. So talking heads is a very, very straightforward, very much, I mean, we can show like just a very sort of 30 seconds of it. Yeah, that, I've never tasted anything like that before. It's really nice. I think the mango stands out really well in it. But as I said, it's just really refreshing, just a nice combination of flavours. I like how the flavours all complement each other and the, nothing is too overpowering, it's not too strong. I definitely like it because you can, you can taste all the strong flavours but at the same time it's not overwhelming. Okay, so that's very sort of typical sort of talking heads. You know, you try and get sort of a bit of the branding of the, of the, um, the client in there, but essentially it's very, very straightforward. Um, Vox Pops are fantastic for, especially for product testing. Um, and campaign testing. We quite often take out iPads and actually show ads, etc. Um, really good for getting instant responses or if you really want to create the atmosphere of sort of being in situ. So, for example, if you're at an airport, we've done quite a lot of airports and at railway stations and even on trains as well. So, again, on a train, you're getting the, you know, people looking at adverts and you're actually there in sort of there, there with them. Um, added graphics, which is the next one, this is when you start to get a little bit more, um, do a little bit more with your, your um, editing. So you're adding in extra facts and figures and trying to incorporate the two together. Again, this means that you can actually leave the video with your client and they can distribute it quite easily amongst sort of their organisation. It will have everything in it. Adding graphics can help to add both context and creativity to your video research. Whether you wish to incorporate supporting facts and figures to bolster your research, buzzwords to emphasise particular points of view, or imagery and animation to strengthen key insights, adding graphics helps to create a uniquely stylized video that will help to further engage your audience. So then, um, on to segmentation. So segmentation 
Um, we tend to get involved, especially when it's in big international projects, and people have done, maybe they've got eight segments across about, say, 12, 16 countries. Um, and again, it's a, it, logistically, it's actually quite a large, it's, it's, it's large because we collect so much footage. And it's a question, again, of, of cutting it down by segment and often also by theme as well. So this is one, we'll just show you just 30 seconds, but this was done on behalf of, um, well, it's for Unilever, essentially. La santé, le bien-être, pour moi, c'est essentiel. Euh, je pense que c'est mon éducation qui veut ça. J'ai une mère qui a toujours mis l'accent sur euh, le fait qu'il fallait être en bonne santé, été élevée dans euh, l'hygiène, euh, qu'il fallait qu'elle soit parfaite. La santé n'est pas esthétique. La santé n'est pas pour aller à l'académie, avoir un bon bon parfait. Il faut être dans la personne. Et ce que si te falta, tu vas se sentir mal. Kalau saya sempat saya pergi ke gym biasanya uh, treadmill atau yoga saya suka yoga sih yang penting sih sebenarnya bersih bersih itu sehat jadinya. Okay, so good. Um, with segmentation, one of the key things obviously is recruitment, and that's what I often get asked about. So it's not just about them being fitting the, all the criteria that we're looking for, but it's also that they look the part. So it's almost like we get involved in casting, um, because somebody like sort of premium perfectionist or say fly, you know flirty Fiona needs to look like a flirty Fiona, not a sour Susan. You know, so they really do have to look the part. Um, which kind of gets interesting because sometimes you're like, well, it's not quite the right person. The other thing about the kind of work that we're doing, because we're looking for very specific comments, it is, uh, but done in a natural way, it's very much about obviously open-ended questions and it's the same techniques that you'd use in qualitative research. However, we do have to try and get those lovely sound bites um, without the interviewer's voice in it. So it, that sort of takes a little uh, skill set too. And there's a lot of nodding. We do an awful lot of nodding and kind of, you know, kind of body language, telling them, trying to get them to talk without us interrupting. Um, we just missed the, one of the videos on the last page, actually. This one here, the consumer films. Again, I'll just show you a little bit of it, but you'll see filmically it's quite a different sort of style. And this one was a segmentation. This was for a charity, and they'd identified this, um, this lady who is Jennifer, um, as being the actual um, target group that they really sort of aim towards. And what they wanted is they needed something for their internal comms and external comms to really share around the company to really illustrate this is the person and giving an insight into how she felt and, and thought. My children say I'm unselfish, perhaps too unselfish, but that's the way I think I should be. The main bulk of my work is music teaching and I've had very few times in my life when I haven't been busy and I've realised how much I don't like it. We live in, in the outskirts of um, London, it's a great family house so when we moved in um, we had lots of space, which was great for three small children. With William, he's 17, so he went back to school last week. And then we have James, who's 22, and actually hasn't um, stayed with us at all over the summer. I thought that uh, I would, you know, be really busy and not have those feelings of sadness or um, nostalgia. You think you're going to get over it, but you don't, but you adapt. Coming back from James, it was quite late at night. The house seemed dark because he literally, he livened the house up. You do feel empty. It's a sense of quiet. It's almost as if some sort of, ener the energy has gone from so the house. Again, I will stop it there, but again, it's like I say, I have got examples of all of these, but this one in particular, it was a, we followed her over a couple of days and we also had a um, time where we filmed her with her friends as well and groups of friends, so it really did follow her life and some of the key um, highlights that we, we were sort of tasked to, to really illustrate were that she was an empty nester and her feelings of sort of reaching that age when her children were leaving home and it was all quite emotional and the fact she got very emotional about it, but it was trying to create a film which could then convey that, that emotion sort of for their internal purposes. Um, 
I'm going to skip that animation, that animation one because it's very similar to sort of other animation ones. But I'd like to go to the audio with kinetic text. So just to give you a bit of background to kinetic, these ones, um, one of the best examples, but I can't show it to you because it's too um, confidential, is a job that we did with um, one of the gaming company in the UK, the National Lottery. And they were changing their website. And over that weekend, the weekend they were changing their website, they, in, they, had, um, they, man, they were manning the phones big time at their call centres. And what they did is they gave us um, audio from the call centre calls, um, which we then illustrated in the sort of similar vein to this. And they, that was then used, because they, just to bring it, again, to bring it to life and to really show what people were saying about the website and the problems they were incurring or how they felt about it generally. But this is a more generic one. So I'm going on holiday this summer to Spain. No planning's gone in yet, but it's something I need to plan for shortly. <laughs> I'm more of a spur of the moment kind of person. I should probably plan more. We have booked it and we've paid for it. And we're going in England and we've booked a house for us all on the beach. My wife was looking at booking a, a holiday yesterday, actually, so potentially yeah, going to France this year. I've been planning to go to Disneyland for two years, but it's just so expensive for the Disney hotels and everything. So me and Morgan are saving up, and this year we finally have enough money to go. It's quite a good time to plan holidays, at the beginning of the year, sort of January, when you have a few, you know, weeks that you've got nothing to do. I love Christmas, and it's a big, like, big thing to me with all the family. And you always get those January blues. So I like to know that I've got something to look forward to. If it was a summer holiday, we'd probably start planning now for September to look at what deals you can get. So again, that kind of gives you a different view and a different way, again, another way of presenting it. So um, basically, the, this is a, a case study that I'll run through quite quickly, just for way over the time. Um, we've been working with Unilever for a couple of years now and do, on something called the Daily Consumer. And what that's, what's that involved is, um, is basically interviewing women um, all over the world and creating short, very short films, about three minutes each, and then they've basically created a portal and people can go and watch um, these videos every day. So this is, we actually gen we created the portal as well, um, which they then put onto their intranet. So you access it via their intranet, but it's, it's something that we house and we host. Um, we've also added a little thing into it, which is just a very little trim and cut um, facility. So basically it means that as you're going through the video, if you just want like a 10 second clip or 15 second clip from the three minute video, you can stop and start and, and download it. So again, that's quite handy for going back to the, when you just want to add the little clip into, you know, to liven up your presentation. So that's kind of like how it looks. As you can see, you've got your topics, you've got it by respondent, um, you've got, and you've got translated transcripts as well. So in terms of, this was, um, it's actually a little bit more than that now, but it was about 300 odd videos, um, 140 consumers, 26 markets, different topics. And again, we quite often, we will actually edit the videos by topic, um, probably more than by woman. Um, and again, one of the things that we've also done is taken, we've had, we've created, if, I don't know if you see the one here, the water scarcity summary video. So say, for example, we've done a, one of the topics was water scarcity and we interviewed women in eight countries. We would then take the stats and figures from Unilever and then actually create a video with sort of the animation sort of style that I've shown you, but intersperse it with real women as well talking about it. So that's been quite a, a, a sort of like a huge undertaking of you. So coming to the end, um, in terms of using video in research, it's like I say, I'm sure that you know, most of you are actually using video already. We, are, we tend to start at the back, at the end. So it's kind of like, what, you know, who we, it's looking for who is the audience, because that will determine the sort of style and the kind of methodology and the sort of service that you're wanting, and also the quality. You know, it's great to have the raw footage from video diaries and, and sort of like researcher filmed 
um, kind of um, sort of interviews. However, sometimes if it's going to go and should be shown at a marketing level or on your internet or for sort of promotional purposes or to a big conference, then often the clients do want a better quality and a higher sort of like a higher end quality. But, but it's not always. I mean, if you're conducting research and you've got an audience of one, you don't necessarily need, you know, need that kind of video for communicating purposes. It's also the second part is about visualising, you know, planning the narrative, creating the story, deciding the type of edit that, needs, that, that is required. And that includes everything from giving, you know, you thinking about your brand, um, your brand colours, um, your sort of like house guidelines. It could be that you're starting off on video and you want every single thing watermarked, so you've always got your logo in the corner, so that you're starting up a, a sort of like a, a, home, a house style. So that all those kind of things to think about. And then the third part of it is to really think about how you're going to share your video. You know, where you're going to show it, is it going to be internally, externally, is it going to be on your internet, is it going to be on your, um, you know, your, in, um, your websites, um, is it going to be on your plasma screens, is it going to be in your reception area? I mean, there are all these places. One of our clients had them in the lifts, you know, at the at Canary Wharf, they had them showing in their lifts. So it really is about, the whole thing about it is, is actually getting your consumer's voice out there, getting your insights heard, making people go, oh, where did that come from? And then they come over to the insight department. Because at the end of the day, if you could be spending millions of pounds on research, but if it's not getting shown, not getting communicated, it's like, what's the point? You know, I would actually say, as I would, because it's a you know, video, but I would say, you know, spend 90% of the budget on the actual research and then 10% on thinking about how to communicate it. And whether that's through video or through sort of like the theatre sort of style thing that we've seen today or whatever way it is, but really think about how can you get it out to everybody, um, not just sort of like the research department. That's it. Thank you very much.